The prophets have been foretelling for years the great revival coming to America in ways it has never been seen before. Have we reached the fullness of times? Do all the pieces to the puzzle of prophecies old and new finally connect? What is God's agenda for America? Let's go on a prophetic journey and find out. As powerful as the first nine videos were in foretelling this great awakening that is to come, perhaps there is none that holds more weight than this. I believe it is only fitting that we save the tenth video for the prophecies of Kim Clement and Kim Clement alone. For just as the tenth plague alone had the power to do what the nine before it could not, so the cumulative weight of Kim Clement's prophecies had the power to release the first nine videos before it like an arrow of fire striking the fear of God into the nation and provoking it to shake off its shackles and to leave the bondage of Egypt once and for all. But there is one man who represents the Moses of this generation. It is Kim. For just as God took Moses all the way to the top of the mountain to see the promised land with his own eyes before taking him home, so God allowed Kim to see the first fruit of his many prophecies, Donald Trump's November 8, 2016 presidential victory, before he died 18 days later. There's not a video series that will provoke more awe than this, not just because of the diversity and accuracy of these prophecies, all from the same man, but from how far back in the past they were told. There's not a video in this series that will provoke more awe on you as the one I'm about to share. Kim was a true prophet, and true prophets don't just hit the edge of the dartboard on occasion, they're able to hit the bullseye. There are many elements of Kim's word I share today that have not yet been fulfilled. Some of these words are bold in nature, easy to dismiss just as the people of Noah's day so smugly dismissed the flood. I ask you to consider that the convergence of these words has not yet come to pass, but could be converging shortly. And before you consider the words that seem to speak of the days we are now entering into, I want you to first consider two of his bull's eyes from the past. The first was a word given on July 25th 1996, five years before 9-11. He said, There has been a terrorist attack and will be another. For the Lord says America will retaliate, but God says even as they retaliate with natural weapons of war, and they say, We will go to the place of the east, and we will bring them down for what they did to our people, as they flew in the air of a long island. And the Spirit of the Lord says, And another will take place, but I will prevent many deaths because I will cause the security thing to happen so that they will not die. But God says the retaliation will not be right. It will not be of my spirit. It will be a wrong decision. One thing I have learned about Kim's prophecies is that there is always an element that does not make sense. And there are almost always elements that don't make sense until you dig a little deeper. I don't know what he meant by a security thing to happen so that they will not die. Perhaps I could figure it out if I did my research. But it's safe to say that he did hit the mark. Now you might say, well, he never actually said New York City. And I would say, no. But he did say, and we will bring them down for what they did to our people as they flew in the air of a Long Island. Where is Long Island? And what is this place of the east they will go? Is it not Afghanistan and the regions of the Middle East? And what about the strange terminology? there has been a terrorist attack and will be another. Was he foretelling two different attacks or did God foretell a preliminary plane that would crash into the Twin Towers, which would be followed by another? The first prophecy leaves little doubt he foretold one of America's greatest tragedies five years before it happened. But this next prophecy takes it one step further. Does God still exact judgment? After hearing this, that question will be hard to refute. On July 22, 2005, almost nine years to the day of Kim's 9-11 word, he prophesied this, Enough of past curses reminding you of yesterday's failures. Enough of New Orleans and its treachery. Enough of you stealing the Ark of the Covenant from my people. Just because you had those surrounding you who had no faith. And Caleb said to you, We are able to take this land. And Joshua said, We are able to take this land. But ten voices arose against the Lord God, and they would stone my servant Moses and say, Let us stone them and raise up another leader so that they may go back to Egypt. Would you go back to your dung? Would you go back to your vomit? 
O oh, New Orleans, God says to you from Houston tonight, enough of this, for a judgment is coming, says the Spirit of the Lord, and I will take the men who stood in faith, and I will raise them above the flood against those who constantly bicker and stand against my servant Moses or my servant Bilbo. I want you to understand there are men of New Orleans, there are men of great faith, but you have been set aside not to lose, but to win, says the Lord. Enough of this, for I will take the curses, and the bodies will even rise and come forth on the water. But God says, I will keep you, and the stench of death will only last a few days. And then God will say, what I promised two years ago will come to pass, for enough is enough. That word was chilling, but even more so when you consider that Hurricane Katrina, one of the deadliest hurricanes ever to hit the United States, killed an estimated 1,833 people in the hurricane and the flooding that followed in late August 2005 along the Gulf Coast and in New Orleans, just over a month after Kim delivered that word. By the way, the reference to Bilbo was not a Lord of the Rings slip, but rather a reference to Reverend Garland Bilbo, pastor of Praise Church in New Orleans during the flood. It's worth noting before we go any further here that God's ways are clearly not ours. In this word that clearly speak of New Orleans, God makes reference of Moses and Caleb and Joshua. He refers to the Ark of the Covenant and their desire to return to Egypt. This is important to understand if we are to rightly decode the words to come. Just as when Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago, God still often speaks in parables and codes today. Now, if you'll remember Kim's first prophetic word about Donald Trump, which I share in extensive detail in video number two, occurred in 2007, two years after his Hurricane Katrina word. Four years after that, on March 25th, 2011, he said this, The betrayal that has been so evident in the White House, bring that to mind. I see a president who will come, and this is not to speak negatively about this present one, but it will be one who will have absolutely no fear. He will be decisive. And then, in the middle of the restoration of America, rapidly, because of a source of energy that shall come quickly, because of medical breakthroughs, because of deals, especially with China. God said, they shall say, we never believed this could happen. And they will say, Christ shall reign and we shall not implement at all socialism. Where they have said, we will make history without God. No, you will not, says the Lord. And God says, healing shall begin and then it will flow rapidly. Schools will be free from potential danger. Shootings and murder, drug addictions, cartels shall be afraid of a woman, a woman anointed by God, a woman set aside. And God says, they will say, we hated her, but now we love her. For she shall take the oil of healing and she shall pour it on those on the left and on those on the right. And of this new party that has come forth and emerged. Therefore, the healing that is necessary for this nation shall come at a time in the middle of the presidency. There shall be a woman who will come, and they will suddenly feel the healing, and they will say, It is well with my soul. It is well with our soul. For the soul of America has been corrupted with bitterness and anger. And she shall say, No more bitterness. No more anger. No more division. As with most of Kim's words, there is enough to know he saw something. But what he saw is still vague and uncertain. This word, given during the early presidency of Barack Obama, specifically notes that it is not for the current president, but for the one who will come, one who will be absolutely fearless and decisive. That would seem to fit the description of Trump, but even more so in the context of his prophecy four years earlier of Trump becoming a president who they would try to impeach. And then, after a long pause, Kim goes off on a tangent that makes us all shake our head in wonder. He makes reference to a time he calls the middle of the restoration of America, which he marks by three events, a source of energy that shall come quickly, medical breakthroughs, and deals, especially with China. As I write this on May 4th, 2020, I'm completely baffled because of everything that has just played out before us. Let's start with deals, especially with China. Before I expound there, let me first make mention of at least one significant deal made recently. In March 2020, Trump ordered the purchase of up to 77 million barrels of crude oil from Russia and the Middle East after the oil market crashed overnight. That's pretty significant. 
But as for China, there is arguably the largest trade deal we've ever made with China toward the end of 2019. But then the global pandemic that arose from Wuhan, China hit, and it would seem another trade deal is the furthest thing from either one of their minds. We shall see. But what are these medical breakthroughs? Could he be speaking of remedies that arise to combat the COVID-19 virus? And as for the energy source that will arise quickly, we may just need to stay tuned because he may explain that one in another prophecy three years later. But then he speaks of this Esther character who would pour the oil of healing out upon the nation and would unite the party on the left and the party on the right. Who is this woman he could possibly be speaking of? This woman we once hated, but now love. I previously said I wrote this script for the video on May 4th. I am now revising this video on July 27th, with plans to record in August and release in September. If you'll remember, George Floyd was killed on May 26th, so clearly this picture has become clear since my first draft. Do we even need to elaborate on the words, no more anger, no more division? And are we not, if Trump gets re-elected, just months away from the middle of the presidency? which Kim also refers to as the middle of the restoration of America. But this gets even more interesting when you dissect this further. The prophecy continues. They will say we hated her, but now we love her. Who is the first black American to speak out against the protests that followed? What black woman came under greater attack than anyone in the weeks to follow? The answer is Candace Owens. That may be shocking to some, and only time will tell whether she ultimately plays the role. But before we move on, I do want to expound on one more point. Kim said she would take those on the left and those on the right, and of the new party that has come forth and emerged. Could this new party Kim foresaw be Black Lives Matter? The shoe would seem to fit, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. On February 22nd, 2014, Kim Clement said this, I was praying for America and praying for Israel when I saw a vision as if scales were being removed from my eyes of hundreds of thousands of people lined up behind me. And as I turned around, I saw them in the formation of an arrow. I raised my hands and they raised their hands too. I shouted and they all shouted. They were one. They were one. One party. One party of people. It continued until I realized that amongst them was one who was chosen to lead this nation. Who this man was I was not allowed to see because of a mist that covered him. And the Spirit of God made me look at him and he said, This man will throttle the enemies of Israel. This man will throttle the enemies of the West. And there are highly embarrassing moments that are about to occur for many, many politicians in this nation. And there will be a shaking among the Democrats in the coming elections, but unsettling for the Republicans. Why is God doing this? For God says, I am dissatisfied with what has come forth from both parties. And then God showed me a nation itching for a new kind of war with America. They will shout, impeach, impeach, they say, but nay. This will come very suddenly, but he will not come during the presidency of Obama. They shall come when this new one arises, my David, whom I have set aside for this nation. And they shall say, what is your plan for this giant? And he will take a simple stone, remember the name, and they will laugh at him because the plan was so brilliant it could only have been given by me. They will shout, impeach, impeach, but this will not happen, for there will be highly embarrassing moments when the Snowden rises, and then people will become very afraid, and people will say, we have no protection, and I will say, am I impressed with your weapons of war, with the strength of your men's legs? Ha! I have said, I will bring this nation to its knees. And God says, you have been humbled and yet some more. And then you shall hear the sounds of great victory. The enemy will do everything he can to put a witch in the White House. Did anybody hear what he just said? Watch how I change everything. Clearly that word sends chills down our spines now, but there are a few points worthy of further evaluation. Kim referred to a stone that would take down a giant. This may be a reach, but on January 25th, 2019, FBI agents raided the house of Roger Stone, a longtime friend of Trump's and veteran political operative. Stone was indicted on seven counts of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia meddling in the 2016 election. 
A November 2019 ABC News article cites Stone as one who persuaded Trump to run for politics in the first place. Stone, who became the youngest person to testify in the Senate Watergate hearings, had his house raided by dozens of FBI agents who ransacked his house searching for evidence with, lo and behold, CNN cameras rolling, indicating that they had been tipped off in advance. But what did this old man know that would warrant such a hostile arrest? Could it be that they were looking for something else? Could it be that the FBI knew something none of us did? That Roger Stone was intimately connected to Q? More on that in a minute. On January 24th, 2020, Stone said this on Newsmax TV. The Democrats hiding the Biden strategy is painful to watch. The president, as Ruth Giuliani has said, not only has the authority, but the responsibility to investigate corruption of a federal government employee, current or former. And I really think Rudolph Giuliani knows a lot more than he said so far. And when he says this could be one of the biggest scandals in American history, you know there's something there because he is a straight shooter. I think he's uncovered massive corruption. I believe it goes wider than the Bidens. It may topple the legacy of the Obama administration, which is why the Democrats are so anxious to say, don't look over there, look over here. Second, when Kim says they will shout, impeach, impeach, but this will not happen for there will be highly embarrassing moments when the Snowden rises, could this be yet another heavenly inference to Rudolph Giuliani? and his investigations. It could also refer to Julian Assange or Seth Rich. It could even be speaking of Q. This becomes all the more intriguing when you consider a letter Kim's daughter found after his passing. It was a letter addressed to Donald Trump in 2015 that, for whatever reason, never made it into the mail. That letter strangely described Giuliani as a modern-day prophet. Finally, Kim refers to a witch they will try to put into the White House. Now, clearly, we know how the 2016 presidential election went. Now, what Kim meant by that, or what the Spirit of God meant by that, only time will tell. Next, we jump three more years ahead to June 14th, 2014. He begins, Today I will expose and I will reveal, for you have entered into a time of uncover, for I will bring out from under the covers the truth, for there have been too many lies, one lie after another, covered in high national positions that have affected the globe, have affected the seas, have affected the skies. America, you are not as secure as you think you are. But in my kingdom, there are people who are praying, and there are prophetic words, and there are truths from my word that will preserve this nation for the purpose of extending my light to the next generation, says the Lord. There are two E's that I see. One E is the word erupt, and the other is earthquake. There is a national park where there is an eruption under the earth, and many will say it is merely an eruption, but it is a sign that it will contain that which is trying to be destructive in this nation. A volcano will be a sign, and then there will be another earthquake. Keep your eyes open, for the sign is to get the earth to yield of its produce, so that the great E may come forth rapidly. This is my promise, says the Lord. Therefore, take heed today as you come forth and strike the rock. I will release that which has been held back from you and cause triumph to be shouted from your mouths. Now, obviously, we haven't seen an eruption or an earthquake yet, but we didn't see a flood or planes flying into buildings right away either. What we have seen are the signs of many lies hidden in high places, but those lies have not yet necessarily been revealed. The Durham report is still pending. Many shady pieces to the COVID-19 puzzle have not yet drawn any definitive answers. The deeper, darker deeds that many truth seekers have uncovered have not yet been laid bare for all to see. Not yet, anyway. And that part of Kim's prophecy was unusual, but what followed was more mystical still. He begins, almost as a poet. Summer reaches to spring and to fall. I will be the mediator, says Summer. I will uncover, I will defend. My sun will shine, but yet, beneath the earth there is a rage, eruptions. Summer says, why choose me? Why do the hurricanes and tornadoes choose me? I am summer, I bring smiles, I bring sunshine, I bring warmth. And yet, there is a tumultuous rendering that is coming. 
I stand to protect spring, but fall, you are rebelling. Or is it that possibly the Spirit of God will cause many to fall and fall? Then there is the earth that wishes to tremble and shake, for the nations of the earth stand waiting. He is quiet. He shall not return. This God is too quiet, but my mercy endures forever. However, there is an uncovering of great evil, and I will start from the top. I have shaken the Democrats and will shake the Republicans even more. But remember when these tremors and when these tumultuous actions happen, some will say, I will take it so that the fall can do its work in America. The auto industry in this nation shall arise and shall disappoint the expectations of the East. And they shall say, what do they have? Why does America still prosper? Spirit of darkness and demonic powers are raging that these two extremely wicked terrorist organizations shall be pierced with the sword of the Lord. Summer, take it, for thus says the Lord, I will prosper my people. But during the fall there shall be many that shall fall, and many that shall rise from the dust. The earth is standing prepared. I shall take it, for the summer shall bring forth much in the temperatures. Strange July, strange July, hypnotic November, an old Christmas where winter shall say, And me, I shall make them happy. For God says I have chosen each season to manifest something. My will shall be done, and it shall come to pass that I shall bring sign after sign. And in fall, that which comes down shall be that which was able to be shaken. And I will build and release my resources. And in the fall, I will show you whom I have chosen to pray for and guide this nation. You shall rejoice, for it is my man. It is my chosen David, says the Lord. Now just to be clear, summer constitutes the months of June, July, and August. So as we get ready to record, it is near the end stages of the summer Kim spoke about. Fall, meanwhile, when many will fall, includes the months of September, October, and November. Finally, Kim ends his prophecy, In fall, I will show you whom I have chosen to guide this nation, my chosen David. The election falls on November 3rd, and the 400-year anniversary of the Mayflower Compact, America's first written covenant with God, November 11th. Now, I can't help but trace back my steps. I copy edited this three hours ago on July 27th, anxiously wondering, Jesus, what did you mean, strange July? I may have just gotten a sneak peek. I just finished watching the testimony of about 15 doctors that congregated together today to sing the praises of hydroxychloroquine, to challenge the wisdom of keeping kids out of school, and to question the overall COVID narrative. One doctor from Africa touted, I have treated 350 COVID-19 patients with hydroxychloroquine, and not one has died. How are you going to tell me we don't have a remedy? Minutes later, I received news that Attorney General Barr has announced a news conference releasing an opening statement that refers to the grave abuses involved in the bogus Russiagate scandal. Could two of the biggest fake news narratives of our time both begin to crumble tomorrow? Could this be what God meant when he referred to Strange July? As always, we will have to wait and see. There is no doubt this prophecy is full of mystery, but the primary themes of Kim's words are becoming predominantly clear. God chose this man, Donald Trump, to be president and he will serve a second term. There will be investigations, exposures, and many people in high places will fall, and America will rise again and prosper like never before. In 1996, Kim spoke of 9-11. 19 years later, he spoke of terrorists striking New York again. On June 2015, he said this, You have shown me New York. You have shown me how the enemy has once again planned something, but this time is completely different than 9-11. This is nothing like it. This is the strangest infiltration that shall come upon your screens and it shall come upon you in your movie houses. It shall come upon you in your places of comfort and they shall say, we shall infiltrate and we shall even block them out and there shall be darkness in one section and darkness in another. Now granted, his terminology is a bit obscure and his prophecy shorter than most, but I think you have to assume, based off his track record, that God showed him the coronavirus hitting New York, where more than 25,000 citizens have now died. Stranger still, later that same month, on June 17, 2015, 
Kim recorded this account. God has told me to go to New York, and just before I left, I told my team that I needed to meet with some leaders. I specifically felt like I needed to meet with Donald Trump. And just as I was about to leave, I have just found out that he has announced his intentions to run for president. That is important because whenever the Lord leads me to set my feet on a certain ground, there is a reason for that. Stranger still, following that recording, Kim's health went south dramatically, and he never made the trip. As a result, he never met with Trump, a meeting that, according to Kim's daughter, Donald Trump had already confirmed. Sixteen months later, Kim passed. Did the enemy strike Kim down, knowing the impact his words would have on the president? Did Donald Trump ever hear all the words you have heard today? Those are questions I don't have answers to. But if you can believe it, there might be one nugget of gold buried beneath the rubble that shines brighter than all the rest. There is no prophecy by Kim Clement that garners more intrigue than his first reference to Trump, but probably none offers more mystery than this. In June 2012, he said this, The vision of wickedness and impending danger is due to some device hidden in a place unknown to the present intelligence. That's what I have to tell you, and maybe even ignored. This weapon is in a human mind, and the weapon came to me when I saw the alphabetical letters. At first I thought it was A to Z. Now, this is a puzzle to me right now, but then God said, pay attention, so that the mystery can be unfolded. The letters were A and Q. That's all I saw. Now, go out there and research. This word absolutely astounds me. Anyone who has been tracking the whole Q phenomena these last three years has got to marvel at Kim's insight. In October 2017, Trump gave a similarly mysterious line when he announced that a photo shoot with top military families. This is the calm before the storm. What do you mean by that, Mr. President? A photographer asked. You'll see, he answered with smug vagueness. Clearly he knew something we did not. Two weeks earlier, an anonymous source posted the first of a series of thousands of digital breadcrumbs suggesting that there is a deep state conspiracy that is larger than any of us could have ever imagined, as well as an army of lights spearheaded by the president himself, positioned to take down the entire cabal. The source referred to himself as Q. Kim describes it this way, The vision of wickedness and impending danger is due to some device hidden in a place unknown to the present intelligence. He seems to be saying that there is a wickedness and impending danger that is hidden from clear sight, but captured by this device. By describing it as hidden from present intelligence, he seems to be saying that there is something that would normally be only found by CIA or FBI operatives, but that is now hidden from them. He then refers to it as a weapon hidden in a human mind. In other words, the weapon is an idea of how to unveil the hidden darkness of wickedness and impending danger. Finally, Kim unveils the mystery letters, A and Q. The anonymous source is also referred to as QAnon, or Q Anonymous. He even says, so that the mystery can be unfolded. This is the nature of Q's work. It is meant to awaken Americans just as Morpheus awakened Neo. Not with direct answers, but with a breadcrumb trail of clues that lead only to those who earnestly seek to find the truth. Kim even ends with a line that resembles the words of Q himself. Go out there and research. Thank you for listening. Please click on to the next video to see What is God's Agenda for America Part 11. Johnny Enlow. Moses passes the baton.